Hello Wolfpack, got a variety of things to cover here on Bitcoin. Uh, as an update to the current situation, uh, of course that situation being that we're in a bear market on Bitcoin um, and you know that's just what it is at the end of the day, isn't it? I mean, we're down, look, at the end of the day, we're down uh, almost what, you know, 52% from all-time highs. You know, if we're not going to say this is a bear market, when are we going to say it? You know, when we're down 70% from all-time highs? You know, it, at some point, you need to understand that it's just a, a phrase, just a term that's used to describe the current state of the market. Uh, in traditional markets, for example, the S&P 500, anything over a 10% loss would be considered a bear market. So I think that um, there's a sense in crypto that it's not a bear market until you're down 99% and you're completely rugged of your net worth. I think it's ridiculous, to be honest. And I think we just need to start saying what it is. I mean, we're literally below uh, one of the most popular indicators in the entire technical analysis space in cryptocurrency called the bull market support band. When you're below the bull market support band, what does it mean? You're in a bear market, okay? So very simple stuff, very straightforward there. Uh, but I, I endlessly, just relentlessly get five, four to five people in the comments section of basically most Bitcoin videos um, saying that it's not a bear market. I just don't, you know, I don't really know what to say uh, to those kind of people. So, you know, if you want to live in denial, you can do that. But ultimately what's going on in Bitcoin right now is the fact that, well, first and foremost, we've got a fractal. All right. And the fractal is you know, very accurate. It's mostly invalidated. I will say that. Um, this fractal is basically torn directly, and I'll tell you where it exactly it's torn from, directly from the 2018 period here, right? That is the fractal. It's taken directly. It's scaled up uh, to size. I could do it right now live in the video, but it will take a little bit too long. So I'll just leave it here. This fractal is directly from 2018. And for the people who say that, you know, we're not like 2018 right now, the market's different than 2018, uh, the market may be different, but the price action is still exactly the same as proven by this fractal. That's not my opinion. It's just for evidence of a situation. Look at this fractal and then look at the price action, right? Look at that. Look at that similarity there. You can see that the price action here uh, and the structure of the entire move is identical. And so it is logical to assume if the structure of the move is identical, the result of the move is going to be the same. And the result of the move so far is indicating that we'll go to the 20, 200 week SMA on Bitcoin. Uh, which let me get a weekly chart up, is down here. Uh, and by the time we get there, it will be at around 24K. Um, and that would be in November 2022 for various reasons that we've looked at in previous videos. Uh, let's, you know, let's just go ahead and just look at that for like two seconds again and, and we can show you why that is the case. Um, ultimately, it falls down to the four-year cycle theory. Uh, and, and people generally say that the four-year cycle theory is, is invalidated uh, because of the last bull market, but this kind of proves it's not. I'll explain this in like two seconds here. Uh, from high to low, 400 days. From high to low, 400 days. These are the yellow boxes. And then speculating from high to low would be about 400 days. Would bring us to November. Then from bottom to bottom, 1,400. From top to top, 1,400. From top to top, 1,400. And then speculating again, making two data points to suggest that the low is going to be uh, on Bitcoin in November 2022. And then also, of course, you have from bottom to top, 2013 to 2017, you have 1,064 days. And then uh, from bottom to top, 2018 to 2021, you have the exact same number of days. So that's a four-year cycle theory there. Uh, and seeing as it's played out perfectly, even though people think it hasn't, because they haven't looked at the data, um, you can suggest that, or you can you can kind of assume that it's going to keep playing out until it doesn't, right? So the trend is your friend until it ends. And so far, the 10-year trend for Bitcoin, almost 10 years, uh, has suggested that the bottom is going to be in November 2022. Now, obviously, there is a chance that that doesn't happen. You know, I mean, we're going into a time on Bitcoin where, uh, you know, we have interest rates being risen. We have a first potential recession. We've never seen a recession uh, in the time of crypto being alive. Bitcoin came out, uh, well, came out on the charts and massively, you know, before or well, after the financial crisis in 2008. And so we haven't seen a recession uh, in the entire history of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. And so it will be interesting to see how the market reacts, but Generally speaking, the trend is your friend until it ends. Uh, and we don't have evidence of any kind of recession right now. And we don't even know how that's going to affect Bitcoin. So we have to assume at this point, we're going to be bottoming out on the 200 week SMA, uh, which is going to be at around 24K and it's going to be in November, 2022. Regardless of all of that, we've got a few things to look at today as we try to answer the question, uh, will we go higher in the short term on Bitcoin? Regardless of our long-term prediction, uh, you know, I think we're going down. I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, will we go higher in the short term? Uh, what I will say first and foremost is the highest we can go on Bitcoin and still be bearish is 47K. If we break 47K, we're going to be bullish on Bitcoin. Uh, if we break 47K, we've essentially broken bull market support band and we've broken uh, the 50-week SMA, which is currently at around 46.5. So break 47K and we're bullish. As long as we're below 47K on Bitcoin, uh, that's a bear market territory. And so, well, we have to ask the question, well, well, can we break 47K? Can we even get to 47K? Can we even get higher in the short term? 
At the very least, can we see another dead cat bounce before we drop downwards? And that's the question we're going to try and answer right now while looking at the daily chart and the weekly chart. Now, looking at whether, whether it's possible or not on the daily chart, there are a few things we can do, um, all of which are very unreliable, I will say that. Because uh, the daily chart, honestly, guys, like, to be honest, it doesn't look good right now. Um, and it doesn't really look like we're going to be breaking up for a retest. Uh, and one of the reasons being is because, well, uh, this uptrending line, this thick uptrending line that we've held through uh, May, July, we had a deviation here in July via candle closes. That was basically, you know, the drop there. And we, we were buying that drop heavily because we knew it was a deviation um, from the trend. It wasn't actually a legitimate drop. It was just a fake out. So I don't count that in. Uh, but ultimately as well, we had this holding up as a, a support zone and then as support again and then as resistance on multiple occasions. And right now, what we've actually done is we've come up right up to it on this recent pump and we've rejected straight off of it and formed a massive red candle straight off of that. So that line, that pink line is a, is a major resistance zone and that's currently sitting and lining up perfectly with 42.5k, 40, which is which is very bearish, right? Because it means that 42.5k is already a massive resistance zone on Bitcoin. I mean, all you need to do to find that out is delete everything, okay? And then draw a line at 42.5k. And you can realize how strong this resistance zone is. All right, there's the line. Okay, so what is 42.5k? That is this, that is this, that is this, that is over here, that is over here. A uh, couple of zones of contention as well throughout here. You know, so 42.5k is a major zone. Uh, and when you're bringing back everything that I just kind of deleted there, you realize that, hey, not only do we have an extra, you know, this is additional according to that, you know, even with that horizontal support, additionally, we have this uptrending diagonal line now in that region as well. And then additionally, on top of that, the bull market support band's heading down to 42k as well. So I would say that just based off that, there is way too much resistance in that region for us to break above it. Um, but... But there is a but. There are a few things we need to be watching regardless, okay? And one of those things, for example, is the RSI uptrend, okay? There is a pretty clear RSI uptrend on Bitcoin that is essentially prohibiting Bitcoin from dropping, uh, you know, below, say, 38K. Uh, and, 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 you know, what we need to be doing on Bitcoin is continuing this uptrend, breaking 42.5K, flipping 42.5K, and then we can consider a serious bullish scenario on Bitcoin. However, as of right now, uh, there's no real evidence to suggest that we're going to be breaking 42.5k. There is evidence to suggest that, well, there's support, and of course there's a support, but there's also resistance, right? Uh, we we are, are unable at this point to make a bullish MACD cross, and if we if we don't manage to break above 42.5k, we probably won't manage to break that bullish MACD cross anyway. And so the MACD is out of the question, it means nothing. Uh, and then this resistance line, for example, on the RSI support line, uh, will probably break if we close a daily candle below 38k. And so 38k... Uh, is the major region on the downside, and then 42.5k is the major region on the upside. But, you know, I don't want to act like, you know, there's no chance we go up for a retest to 46.5k or 47k, because at the end of the day, my actual prediction the 200 week SMA by November uh, is is not really um, going to be, you know, impacted by whether we retest 47k or not. Because, as I said, 47k is the critical breaker. If we retest 47, reject off of it and go further down, but, you know, that's not, that's not an invalidation of my prediction. And so I'm open to the idea of testing 47K. I think that if we do see a better cap bounce, that will be the highest we go. Why is that? Well, in 2018, for example, and as you guys would know by the start of this video, we are following the 2018 price action basically step for step. And so I can directly pull fractals from 2018 because we're following the same price action, right? And so what happened in 2018 was that we dropped below the 50-week, we had a local bottom here four weeks later, 25% uh, down. We came up five weeks later um, and, and retested the 50-week at 46% up and then rejected and end up at 200, okay? So that was the trend. And so right now what we're doing is we're doing something quite similar. Well, we, we dropped below the 50-week. We formed a short-term bottom 30% down after four weeks, the same time frame, similar percentage. Uh, and then we bounced back up. Uh, and we could say that these are 50-week retests. I wouldn't consider them retests yet. But the point is, we could retest the 50-week just like we did in 2018 uh, and go down to, for example, the 200-week SMA after that, as it, their prediction kind of suggests. And what would be interesting about this kind of move is that, well, if we do retest the 50-week, we would be uh, moving 45 or 43% upwards. In 2018, we moved up 46% before rejection off of that. So there are some similarities there. That might have been a bit confusing. Sorry for that. But there are some similarities there that would suggest that, hey, you know, not necessarily we will we will retest it and wick off of it, but if we do, it's really not a problem. And so that's why 47K is the critical region to flip, not necessarily to touch. Touching it doesn't mean anything. If we just go up to 47 and reject downwards, yeah, it's still bearish. But flipping it is what matters. Getting above, getting above 
the 50-week SMA, flipping it, and then heading upwards. That's what matters for Bitcoin. And you'd probably be purchasing on, purchasing on the flip, right? You wouldn't be purchasing on the break. Yeah, it'd be too likely to be a bull trap. It really depends on market environment. But as of Bitcoin right now, yeah, like, is it possible we retest 47K? Like, yeah, it's, it's possible. It's possible, especially with something like uh, the interest rates decision by the Federal Reserve coming up in just four days, uh, where there's going to be massive irrational price action, massive volatility in the market. Uh, and, and just like we had last night with the CPI numbers, right? There's going to be an irrational pump or an irrational dump. It really depends on what happens there, uh, in which no one can really predict anything. And during that period of time, I think it's highly probable, not probable, but highly realistic that we test 47K. Similarly, I think it's highly realistic we test 30K, you know, in the same day. So there's a bit of uh, uh, an uncertainty in the market right now. But what I can be certain about is that so long as we're below 47K, the 200 week SMA is the next step for Bitcoin. And so, you know, if, for example, with this interest rates decision in four days, if it, do, if it can't bring us above 47, if it can't bring us above there and actively close above there, then it doesn't really mean much, right? It's just a it's just a fake pump, in my personal opinion. But there is one more lot chart that I want to bring up, and this is a bit of a bearish chart as well, because the market's bearish, um, you know, that I want to bring up here. And this is kind of following in even more so with those similarities we're seeing from 2018. Uh, this is the three-day chart, and we're bringing up the 200 SMA on the three-day chart and the bull market support band. Uh, and what we can see, what, what we're seeing right now is, well, in 2018, for example, we saw a massive compression between these two indicators before a massive dump. Okay, and right now, what we're seeing as well is a massive compression between these two indi indicators, possibly before a massive dump, All right? And what we can notice about in 2018 is that we crashed when these two indicators met on the same day. And so when these two indicators meet, there is reason to believe due to that and due to the fact that the price action is very similar to 2018, that we will crash. When will they meet? Well, it's probably going to happen in around late April, probably early May, really depends, but late April, early May, it could happen. Uh, and that's what we're looking at for Bitcoin right now. So that's another little bearish scenario to give you there. Uh, and so, you know, I, I hope that my Bitcoin videos don't make you too depressed uh, because they're not meant to make you depressed. They're actually meant to inform you about what's going to be going on in the market from a non, as non-biased as it can get, right? Obviously, I'm a human. I have a little bit of bias, but what I can say is that I'm fully out of the market. I have no money in the market right now at all, besides my long-term holdings of Bitcoin, which I don't care about. Um, and, and so, I'm not someone who's got their entire net worth in Bitcoin, who's hoping and praying every single day it's going to go up and then looking at the charts every day and looking specifically for bullish things, right? I'm someone who's looking at it from an objective standpoint. I think I give a good mix of bullish and bearish indicators. Obviously, my indicators lean more towards bearish right now because the market is bearish. Uh, but I would say that, yeah, like this is a time to be staying away from the market for sure. Uh, we have interest rates in four days being decided upon. And so there's going to be irrational price action, irrational volatility. There's going to be a pump, maybe. There's going to be a dump. You know, if there's a pump, it's probably just a trap like we saw in the F uh, in the CPI meetings yesterday. Uh, CPI numbers, sorry. Uh, let's let's go ahead and check that out. So for example, here, this is the CPI numbers. We pumped all the way up from 38.5K to 40.3K in a matter of about 15 minutes. Uh, and then just kind of continued, right? It was a fake pump. It was a bull trap. Happens every time there is a major event. And everyone in the cryptocurrency space is watching the CPI numbers, right? Uh, sort of watching the interest rates right now. And so there is reason to believe there's going to be a rational price action coming off of that. So keep an eye out and stay safe. Don't jump into the market if we randomly pump up 6K, you know, regardless of how bullish people on Twitter are, you know, because they're always wrong. They're always wrong. I see these big accounts on Twitter. Every time Bitcoin pumps 5%, they think it's a bull market again. You know, be logical. Look for those resistance zones that actually matter. Uh, and the resistance zones that actually matter at this point are 42.5K uh, and, and mainly 47K. And the support that matters really is is probably about 38k and 35k, and then obviously below that you're looking at 30k, you're looking at 28, you're looking at 24. Um, that's what matters for Bitcoin. Everything else is is kind of irrelevant. You know, it's not a bull market anymore, and so we can't be looking too much of at lower time frames. We're looking at the macro trends. We're trying to make a prediction on when the bottom will be. You know, when that bottom comes, we'll be the first ones there to to have planned this ahead, to have capital on the side ready to go to deploy into the market and try get the best possible. Uh, deal we can on some old coins and Bitcoin because at the end of the day, uh, millionaires aren't made during a bull market. Typically, they're made during a bear market, right? Uh, that's a very important saying for you guys to remember. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Sorry for a lengthy video. Sorry for my voice being a little bit croaky. Again, uh, I say this quite often these days. I feel like 
I do, but um, you know, me and Megawell Crypto were making a trading course. I'm speaking to him four or five hours a day. I'm trying to get that sorted out, and then I'm making a video, and then I'm making videos for my Telegram group, and then I'm making another video. It's like I just don't stop speaking. Then my personal life, I talk about, I talk a lot as well with my partner. So um, I apologize for the croaky voice. Um, but uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope to deliver more useful content in the future, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.